Dr. Danilo Tirk, President of the Republic of Slovenia, to deliver the formal address and please. Thank you, distinguished participants, Madam Minister, Mr. Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen. It's obviously something special to speak to a distinguished group of experts on counterterrorism like this on the matter of counterterrorism and its challenges in Southeastern Europe. It is special, it is also challenging, because we are dealing with a problem that requires serious discussion, serious confrontation of ideas and argument, and also very thorough examination of concepts and terminology which is used. I was impressed by the statement, the uh, remarks made by Ambassador Joseph Mussolini, who departed from the usual technique of uh, addressing formal audiences and has given us really a very interesting and exciting set of problems which have to be considered very seriously and in great depth if we wish to come closer to the answers of the challenges of counterterrorism today. And he was right, and I think that this conference is right to address the question of counterterrorism in a very broad sense, in a sense which includes at the beginning a certain level of concern and <clears throat> attention to the, to the terminology itself, to the term terrorism, and to the question of definition of terrorism. This is an old question which has been discussed for decades, which doesn't have a definitive answer, and to which, of course, one can also reply by saying, perhaps we do not need a perfect definition. There are other concepts like this in international practice, for example, aggression. We know, basically, what aggression means, but the forms of aggression change, and therefore the definition of aggression, which does exist, does not always happen. We have other phenomena like this which require very careful examination and perhaps an honest recognition that a definitive terminological answer is not possible. Now, on terrorism, in my opinion, and I would like to suggest this as a contribution to this discussion, I'm very grateful that you invited me to give a speech of about 20 minutes which allows me to depart from my written notes and also to say a few words uh, in relation to what I have just heard. Uh, terrorism is an aggregate expression uh, which describes in a single word, in a single word, a very large variety of forms of political, ideological, and religiously motivated violence. And the objective of terrorism is to create a feeling of fear, intense fear, and to destabilize societies as a social environment or to achieve particular political goals. Now, to start with, I believe that we should recognize that terrorism is not something monolithic, but it is heterogeneous. It is heterogeneous in terms of motivation, in terms of methods used. The only common denominator possibly being the attempt of the perpetrator to create intense fear and to produce social destabilization. There may be other more limited political objectives, but the degree of social destabilization always goes with terrorism. Secondly, terrorism is a form of combat. In other words, it's a tactic. Now, this is an important thing because we have to understand that one does not fight a tactic per se, one fights the person or the agent using that tactic, which means that uh, even if terrorism is a tactic recognizable in its method of execution, it does not follow that there is a single answer to a particular tactic. One has to understand the nature and the motivation of the agent of that tactic in order to define an appropriate and effective counter-terrorism tactic and strategy. And this is something which is not easy to do. Uh, there is no guaranteed success and there is a great deal of work needed before a clear 
and effective tactic and strategy is developed. Now, it is appropriate, I believe, now, 10 years after September 11, to say that that horrendous terrorist act has produced enormous effects on the international community. It has left the entire international community with a feeling of sadness, sadness of innocent victims, because there was no doubt that people who died in the Twin Towers and in Pentagon and in other places were innocent people. So that in itself made that terrorist act special. They are often innocent victims. But obviously innocence as well is sometimes subject of doubt and subject to different opinion, subject to hatred by those who perpetrate terrorist acts. But here the international community was unified in the recognition and belief that victims were innocent, were clearly innocent victims who deserve our full sympathy, our deep grief and sorrow. And that was leading us to solidarity which endures. That level of solidarity which was expressed in September of 2001, and I lived in New York at that time, so I can also speak as a witness, not only as, a, as somebody who talks about uh, that horrendous event. That solidarity was genuine, was very deep, and was something that the world hasn't seen before and probably hasn't seen ever since. Now that, of course, created a special type of atmosphere which, again, led to a variety of events and variety of responses. We have learned to use terminology of war on terror, which is a problematic ter terminology. I would say this is a terminology which has been to a large extent misleading, because it has led to a belief that military means and repressive means are critical or perhaps the only means of effective counter-terrorism strategy. Now obviously this is a simplification, but that simplification which perhaps was not intended by those who coined the, the terminology of the term uh, war on terror, that simplification had an adverse effect on the counter-terrorism strategy as it developed subsequently. But of course, there were other aspects of counter-terrorism which have been developed with a much more complete and much more comprehensive understanding of the problem at hand. I do not wish to go into every detail of that process. I think it has led to many innovations and has increased the level of international cooperation very significantly. So I believe that the world is better prepared to deal with terrorist act and to act preventively with a greater level of effectiveness than was the case before. However, it is important to keep in mind that the terminology of war on terror and the consequent belief that oppressive means, particularly military means, are the key, is misleading. There has to be a more comprehensive approach. I myself worked at the United Nations uh, in the immediate aftermath of 2011, uh, that is September 11, 2001, and was involved in the preparation of the work of the Counterterrorism Committee of the United Nations Security Council. And in that work we have seen how important it is to bring the entire international community together behind a comprehensive program, which involves a variety of measures, including legislative, administrative measures, pressure from the international community, incentives which can be done, which can be organized either bilaterally or through international institutions such as the United Nations and of course NATO as, as a group of very closely associated countries. Uh, it is very important to have all these measures in place, starting with legislation, following through administrative measures and uh, organizing the state structures appropriately and very importantly organizing the international cooperation at all levels with a much greater sense of detail and uh, nuance than was the case before. 
So counterterrorism led to significant improvements, which should be and we should be satisfied that that has happened. Although uh, the situation is far from perfect, but the world is better prepared than was in the past. Now, we should also not forget that the international norms in this context are very important. International conventions which exist in the area of counter-terrorism are fundamental. We do not have a single counter-terrorism convention. We do not have a single definition of terrorism, and that's probably impossible. But we do have clear definitions of major terrorist acts, such as terrorist bombing, such as terrorist uh, hijacking of airplanes, terrorist attacks against diplomats, and many other uh, terrorist acts, which are defined with great precision, and for each of which there is a system of measures agreed to by states that can be followed, or must be followed, if say some parties to the conventions, uh, in order to prevent and combat terrorism. So I believe that this international network, although it is not necessarily in the focus of your attention and your work, should be kept in mind as a very important, very basic, and potentially very effective framework within which counterterrorism can be developed. Now, critical in all this, in my opinion, is the level of cooperation of intelligence, security, police and judicial authorities, and in particular intelligence sharing. That I think is the critical element in this large picture. I'm not well prepared, I'm not well informed, I'm not sufficiently informed to know whether the levels of cooperation achieved so far are adequate. I can clearly see improvement. Yes, improvement is there, but you, the experts, will know whether the level of intelligence sharing is appropriate, whether it provides an appropriate quality of intelligence, or as the experts would say, actionable intelligence. Is that there? Are we moving to, a, or have we reached perhaps a point in which the international community can say, well, the level of shared intelligence such that we can be satisfied. Now, of course, one of the answers to such a question could be that there can never be an ideal level of cooperation, and possibly that is also true. But we should not uh, spare any effort to improve that cooperation, because that is the key to effective counterterrorism. Now, since September 11, <clears throat> the world has lived through a period where there were terrorist attacks, but the overall number seems to have been decreasing, except in certain areas uh, of uh, military conflict uh, and certain areas of political tensions in the world. Yes, there has been intensity of terrorism, which, is, which continues to be a cause of major concern, but Globally, there has been a sense of decrease. Now, you, the experts, will know whether that impression is correct or not, but that's the impression which the political classes of the world share nowadays. They may be wrong, but that's the belief, that uh, that's the impression that, that many political actors around the world today share. Of course, that doesn't mean that the situation is satisfactory. Far, far, from, that, far from that. The situation continues to be a cause of concern. And I would like now to come to a particular point which gives concern to us in Slovenia. Not necessarily only as a part of Southeast Europe, but Slovenia as a part of Europe. Uh, in, at the end of July, as, as we all know, the world was shocked by a terrorist attack in Norway. <laughs> our minister has referred to it. And uh, we have seen that the level of surprise in Norway was, was incredible. And of course we have asked ourselves how can we prevent terrorist acts that can be carried out by groups of individuals for whom we know they exist, but who appear non-threatening, who do whatever they do for a long time 
and don't seem to represent a threat. So this is one problem which we have realized, the seriousness of which we have realized recently. Now, we live in a world where human rights are taken seriously, where freedom of expression is a seriously protected value in the society, where freedom of movement and freedom of every form of communication is guaranteed. And we would like to continue to live in such a society. We would not want to limit in any way our levels of freedom. That is clear. Secondly, we have not been used to understand that radicalism, Right-wing radicalism can lead to violent acts of this nature and intensity. We have lived in a world where we believe that, well, you know, there is right-wing and left-wing radicalism, there is occasional violence, but that's rather limited and it's manageable by the techniques and tactics which, which are already developed. So we have <coughs> underestimated that type of radicalism. We have underestimated that extremist ideas which are based on, on a belief that all ills in a society are a result of guilt of somebody else, normally a person of a different opinion, a person of a different religion, different race, or a different social status, that such beliefs that the ills of society are a result of guilt of somebody else, that such beliefs today can be a serious security challenge and uh, a terrorist threat. Secondly, so, so our unpreparedness was one problem. The other problem was that we live in a media world, in a world where daily broadcasting of catastrophic events brings to our homes all kinds of images. So it's difficult to shock the people. People are used to shocks because they see them on the news practically every day. And then the, that, has an, uh, that has an important impact on what happens in reality because terrorists then think in terms of even greater shocks. Because in order to shock the society you have to produce really something terrible, something unseen on TV. That, of course, is also a problem one has to look at, uh, and perhaps experts in psychology and in other uh, forms of knowledge will be able to make a contribution. But, so these are some of the problems which tell us about how unprepared <coughs> our society was, has been, perhaps continues to be, to address the potential threat of terrorism, which is wider and which brings with it a certain degree of surprise. And surprise, I suggest, should also be seen as an element of definition of terrorism. Not necessarily equal in all terrorist acts, but always present one way or another. Now, the question of how to handle this. First, I believe we should start with a clear realization of something very basic, something that we like to repeat, but not necessarily always with an appropriate level of understanding. And that is that security in a society is not a given. A society may live for a long period of time in relative security, and everybody believes that that's a natural way of... That's natural, that that's the way how things simply are. But we have to understand, and obviously it's not necessary to explain that to you, that security, although uh, present, although real, is not a given. It has to be supported, it has to be nurtured, it has to be taken care of. Support, uh, security for most people, for the largest part of society, is like, like air. If it exists, nobody notices it. But once you start losing air, then of course the problem becomes very serious and people can become very upset. So we have to understand that. That may seem unnecessary or superfluous, what I'm saying, but I believe that, politically speaking, this element of strengthening a culture of understanding that security requires effort, that has to be there as, the, as, as fundamental. Uh, now, of course, uh, this applies to a society like Norwegian, which was uh, 
which was which believed that uh, security is assured. That applies to Slovenia also, because in, in Slovenia we also believe that we have a high level of security, according to OSCD surveys, uh, very serious surveys, uh, security is one of our great assets here in Slovenia, compared to other OECD countries. So we are proud of that, but we have to understand that security is something uh, that we have to nurture and support. Now, <clears throat> the second and the main thing uh, which I believe uh, should be, should be really put a great focus on is the understanding that extremists that exist in a society uh, should not be seen as, as non-threatening, should not be seen as benign. And that applies to Slovenia too. We have nationalist extremists, we have people who openly advocate ideas of neo-Nazism, of xenophobia, and we have to be careful about that. We should not be negligent. We should not believe that that uh, type of uh, people are simply people who hold particular opinions. We have seen in Norway that such opinions can lead to violence and we have to be aware of that. And of course, in, at a more operational level, we have to understand that uh, operating the system of counter-terrorism and prevention of terrorism can be compared to composing a complex puzzle that has to be put together with persistence, continuity and great deal of attention to detail. The slightest mistake in this process may be fatal and may have immense consequences. Therefore, I think we should be very serious about collection of data, making the right connections, in our case looking at neo-Nazi ideas, xenophobia and racism, detect early detection of signs of planned terrorist acts, and early identification of possible interconnectedness of various signs. We have seen in past terrorist acts in different places that it was precisely that inability of the system, security system, to connect various pieces of information which existed that led to the vulnerability of the society and the success of terrorists. I think one has to look into all these elements with great care. Collection, quality of data, very clear and very attentive dealing with signs of planned terrorist acts, interconnectedness, and then of course preventive action in the framework of law. Obviously we want to be, we want to continue to live in the society where the rule of law prevails and therefore we have to be in that sense uh, extremely careful to work in the preventive sense within the framework of the rule of law and with full respect for human rights. That's doable, but that requires a great deal of hard work and a great deal of, of, of high quality preparations. Now, I have expressed a few thoughts which I hope make sense at the opening of your conference. I have departed from my written notes because I have understood from the introductions that this is a conference of people who would really like to get to the bottom of things, who would like to discuss the questions of challenges of terrorism today in a critical manner where one has to look at the potential for terrorist acts in the future with great care, where one has to keep the focus on the specificity of the problem of terrorism in Europe today, and where one has to look for the right kind of techniques, the right kind of organization, the right kind of tactics for the future. I'm sure that this debate that we're going to have will be helpful. I hope we can learn from it. I do not expect that you will find a solution to the age-old problem of the definition of terrorism, and that is probably not necessary. It would help if your work could enrich the terminological texture of our understanding of terrorism. That's always good. It may not perhaps aspire to have an abstract definition in this case, 
Uh, we may perhaps reach it at some future stage, but that's not the most important. The most important is that we understand the phenomenon with sufficient clarity and detail, because that's the only way in which we can then organize effective counterterrorism activity. I wish you a successful conference. I hope your work will help us. I'm looking forward to reading the publication, which I believe will result from your work. This will help us all. And I also wish you a pleasant stay in Slovenia. Thank you very much.